Stacy here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. If you're new here, hi, my name is Lisa. I like to talk about tarot and anything else I feel like because basically this is my big virtual sandbox and I do what I want here. But welcome. It's really good to have you. Welcome to my June show and tell. Yep. I finally did it. I mean, every month I call it my show and tell in the video anyways, pretty much. So I feel like this is just a natural evolution of the monthly favorites video, because really, what is a monthly favorites video if not just basically a virtual show and tell? I like show and tell. Never gonna grow out of it. Might as well just call it what it is. And it actually makes me kind of stupid happy, which is fine. Okay, so moving right along. I'm gonna jump right into my favorites. We're gonna be talking about books, decks, TV, YouTube, magic, herbs, random things. I don't think I really have anything in my random this month. But anyway, we're gonna just talk about whatever and I may think of things as we go because my sandbox, my rules. All right, let's dive in. So in June, TV wise, so I am currently still extremely obsessed with the, I guess this technically is a YouTube favorite, but to me it feels like TV. So anyways, doesn't matter. I put it in whatever category I want. So there is a YouTube channel called The Show Must Go On and throughout the entire sort of global health crisis we've been experiencing, because that's been interesting, uh, they have been producing or releasing rather, not producing, releasing for short periods of time, usually 48 hours, professionally filmed Broadway musicals. And I have to tell you, I have been getting to see things that have been on my bucket list to see for years and years and years and years. Broadway shows have never been something that I've really had a chance to attend, but I am obsessed with musicals in general and I've been really excited to get to see some some shows that I just really desperately wanted to see for a long, long time. I've been pretty much talking about it every month since they started it, which I think was in March. So this may be repetitive, but the shows are changing. So there's that. This month I got to see The Wiz and it was uh, a version that had Queen Latifah as the wizard. And I forget almost everybody else's names because I am actually terrible with actor and actress names. So, but it was a really good cast. I had a lot of fun watching it. I remember seeing The Wiz years and years and years ago when Michael Jackson was in it, but I have a very, very, very vague recollection of what that show was like. And this one was so good and I really, really enjoyed watching it. I also kind of accidentally messed with Peggy or screwed her over because it was the one musical of all the musicals I've been obsessed about. This was the one that she was interested in watching with me and I totally forgot. So she didn't get to see it because she was sleeping and I didn't wake her up. And they were only on for like a limited time and we got distracted. Anyways, long story short, Peggy still hasn't seen any of the musicals that I have seen because I'm a jerk. But <laughs> moving right along, most of them she doesn't care about. The other one I got to see this month was Peter Pan, which was, I think, absolutely magical. I really, really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed all of them. I, I, I really enjoyed all of them. And then this weekend, at the time I'm filming this, there's a very loud motorcycle. This time at the time I'm filming this, they were replaying The Sound of Music with Carrie Underwood, which I actually saw in May. So I had didn't I didn't watch it again, um, mostly because I literally watched Sound of Music that entire weekend because I watched um, Carrie Underwood's uh, live production. And then I also watched the original with Julie Andrews and it was, it was all really good. So that was fun. Anyway, I don't know what's coming up next. They haven't told us yet. I'm holding my breath, hoping that we will get Hamilton, Rent, What's the other one I wanted to see? Hamilton, Rent, Wicked. Um, desperately want to see Wicked. And there's just a bunch that I would still be super happy to see. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that they will release some of those before they stop doing it because I've been really enjoying it. It's also sort of reawakened an in interest generally. So I may just rent them on YouTube if they're available to rent or something. Figure it out because I really want to see more. So that's been fun. That's pretty much the only thing I feel like I've watched. I really want to watch more RuPaul's Drag Race, but I'm so dreadfully far behind. And I, I have this weird thing where, especially when it comes to like seasons where there's all stars and stuff, I want to be completely up to date on all the previous seasons before I watch all stars so that I know like the history of the different contestants and such. And I'm, I'm still behind. So I might get caught up. My other problem is that when I watch RuPaul's Drag Race, I want to watch all the, I forget what they call it, the behind the scenes stuff too, which means it's not just like an episode that's like 45 minutes. It's like an episode and then like another episode of like the behind the scenes stuff. So it's almost like a movie length for every episode pretty much um, because I have no self-control and I don't want to just watch the episodes. 
So if you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, let me know. Do you watch the behind the scenes thing, which I for some reason I'm blanking on the name, or do you just watch the episodes? And do you feel like you miss anything? Because maybe I just need to get over it and get myself caught up. Because now there's going to be a RuPaul's Drag Race Canada or Drag Race Canada. I don't know what it's called. Um, and there's current all stars and people keep talking about it. And I feel very out of the loop and I may just have to get back into that. So, but anyways, I haven't really been watching much TV. I have clearly had a lot of caffeine today because I feel like I'm talking really fast. Welcome to my sandbox. <laughs> it's what it is. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Let's talk briefly about beauty because I have done my makeup one time in June. This is it. This is the one time. <laughs> I actually did my makeup so I could film my anti haul number five, so watch for that coming soon. I still have to edit it and such, but that is coming, uh, hopefully real, real soon. But I did my makeup for that, and it was like the first time I pulled everything out to play in like what felt like a really long time. <laughs> So I have one favorite to share and it is my um, magnetic palette because the eyeshadows that are in here are so much fun to play with and it's like kind of my go-to if I just want to make a look and I don't want to think about what palette I'm going to use because I made this myself by purchasing shadows from mostly from Makeup Geek and then I've got a few random eyeshadows that I rescued from other palettes or from other products that I purchased uh, but this basically is all the shades that I like to wear <laughs> so I can make up whatever looks I want. But anyways, okay, enough, enough drama. So basically all these square pans are Makeup Geek eyeshadows, which I really, these are so good. I have used a lot of high-end eyeshadows. I really, really love makeup. <laughs> and these are my favorites eyeshadow formula to work with, period. Hands down, no question. And the smaller pans you see in here, the smaller like little square ones, so the big square ones like these ones are Makeup Geek. The small little square ones, which look like this gold one right here, hopefully you can see that, these are Viseart eyeshadow. So that's a Viseart there, that's a Viseart there, um, that's a Viseart, that's a Viseart, these two. Um, Viseart is a pricey brand. The Makeup Geek eyeshadows are better than the Viseart, like hands down, no question. Now mind you, I like, this is probably way too much makeup talk for some of you, and you're like, bye girl, I'm going to fast forward, <laughs> get onto the tarot stuff. This is the only place on YouTube anywhere I talk about makeup, I swear. Um, and I, have, I didn't talk about it last month, so, I, okay, on with it. What was I saying? <laughs> I distracted myself. Um, oh, I like a softer eyeshadow formula. So I like when I dip my brush in for it to like kind of like poof a little, like, and to have to tap it off, because those are the eyeshadows, in my opinion, that blend really, really nicely. Except for these metallic ones. Those you don't want to poof when you put your eye, eyeshadow brush in them. Anyways, I really love this. Uh, today, if you can see on my eyes, I'm actually wearing this peach color, like up high. Uh, and then I'm wearing these two purples, um, mostly on the outer part of my eyelids. And then I'm wearing, you probably don't care, but I'm telling you anyways, because it's fun. I'm also wearing this super, super dark purple, um, also kind of in the outer corner. And then this really pretty metallic purpley pink color in the inner part. And a tiny bit of this purple right here, just to blend the super light, shiny color into the darker colors. That's what I'm wearing. But I've never mixed warm tones and like, like peaches and purples before, and I actually really like the effect. So I may do that again, because that was really fun. But yeah, anyway, that's probably enough makeup talk. I'm sorry, but it's show and tell, and I wanted to show and tell, so I did. I'm very sassy today, I feel like. <laughs> Moving along, away from beauty, that was really all I wanted to say, because I did my makeup, uh, and it was fun. Is that all I had for that category? I think it is. Okay, let's talk about food, because I've got a food note here. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes. I always write this stuff down, because otherwise I'll never remember what my actual favorites are. This month, our youngest man child who lives at home, Steve, he made us the most incredible grilled cheese sandwiches for dinner. And I know you're like grilled cheese, right? But no, 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 no. Like anything you've ever heard about grilled cheese, just like throw it out the window because I'm only calling it grilled cheese for brevity, like for the sake of not, I'm still going to use lots of words. Um, so what he did was first he candied bacon with authentic maple syrup because Canada and why wouldn't you and it's amazing by the way candied bacon with maple syrup is so so good anyways he candied bacon and then what he did was we had toasted we had we had grilled cheese sandwiches that were brie candied bacon pecans or walnuts no walnuts so brie candied bacon walnuts thinly sliced fresh Fuji apple 
and candied bacon. Did I say candied bacon? Because that's a really important point in the sandwich. It was the most incredible sandwich I've ever eaten in my entire life. And I mean, you guys, I'm like 40 something, 42, 2, 40, 20, 20, 20. Oh my God, I can't. I'm 42. I'm 42 currently at the time of filming this. I'm almost 43. I've had a lot of sandwiches. This is the point I'm trying to make. And it was really good. And the next day there was like a little bit of leftover brie and a little bit of leftover everything else. So I like made Peggy and I a cold version of the kind of the same thing, but I added lettuce and we didn't toast it. It was still absolutely incredible, but not as incredible as the, the grilled cheese version that he made. And it was like that perfect, like picture perfect grilled cheese where the bread is like toasty golden brown. I'm literally, my mouth, I'm salivating. And I'm talking about the sandwich right now and it is not yet dinner time. Also still loving the soda stream. There's my random for the month talking really fast <laughs> but I'm having a good time so I guess there's that on with it I think I'm just really hyper and excited that I changed the name is that like the most ridiculous thing I'm sure you don't care you don't care it's fine let me know if you care in the comments if you want <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying what is the next category um let's talk about YouTube real quick because there is two I want I didn't making a lot of notes about YouTube because completely, to be completely honest, I haven't watched a ton of YouTube this month. I feel like in June, I've been really focused on my book um, and kind of doing a lot of back and forth with um, layout and all of that kind of thing. And I just haven't been watching a lot of YouTube. And the YouTube I have been watching weirdly lately has been in the YouTube makeup community because there's a whole bunch of like drama happening and I've just been, I don't know, that's just been like the thing that's been popping up in my feed. But I haven't been watching a whole lot of YouTube. But early in June, I think near the very beginning of the month, Katie Flowers put out a video about, what did she call it? Free ways to support content creators. And I thought it was a really well done video. So if I remember, I will link it down in the description box down below. Not because I think it's like something you need to watch or anything like that. I just thought she went about it in a really classy way. And I think she actually gave really useful feedback to people who are like, how can I support content creators? And it was just, just useful, good tips. And I felt like I, as a content watcher, learned something from that experience. Like this is not a thing about like, go watch this so you can know how to support me. It was literally like, I felt like, I learned how to better support the people that I watch, which was useful. Just like little things about like algorithms and stuff that I maybe hadn't encountered before and I thought it was really, really useful information. And it's helped how I like engage with people I watch on YouTube too. When I want to show support, make sure that I click the like button. If I have a chance to, to leave a comment that is authentic, I will leave a comment. But there's other little things you can do that just kind of help the algorithm and I, that was just useful information to me. So I really enjoyed that. And my other YouTube favorite, which I have to shout out because I'm so, so proud, uh, is my book trailer, which I will link up in the I so that you can take a look at it if you have not seen it yet. I put that together this weekend at the time I'm filming this. It is a weekend, <laughs> but I put it together. Um, I hunted down a whole lot of stock video and video that like sort of captured the feeling I really wanted to capture the different sections in the book and all that. And there's all kinds of layers because I love working with like layers of meaning and symbology and stuff. But on the surface, I hope it just comes across as like a clear glimpse into what the book is about and what it's going to to say in general um, in as short of a period of time as I could manage to get it into because I'm a very verbose kind of person. Also, I need to make sure my notifications are quiet for my video. There we go. Okay, so. That is something I'm super proud of and it has to be one of my absolute favorite things in June and also just generally exciting, exciting, excited that we are this, 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 this close to releasing it. It's so close. It's so close. It's so close. Um, so I'm getting really excited and I mean so close is relative because this is like a five year project but like it's so close if you only knew how close. Um, but again, relative. How's that for like a push pull? What am I even saying? No more sugar for me. That's what I'm saying. I'm not gonna cut out any of my babble either because I feel like if you're on my channel, you've experienced this before and are probably not surprised. I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna roll with the hyper. I'm just gonna roll with it. Uh, so let's see, other categories. That was YouTube. I did food. Oh, uh, memories. I did attend a Llewellyn online conference. I can't remember what it was called. It may have just literally been called the Llewellyn online conference. But essentially it was a bunch of Llewellyn authors giving short, I'd say, I think they were 30 minute um, talks of which I think usually about 20 minutes was content and then about 10 minutes was Q&A. I didn't get to see as many of them as I wanted to. I could, I believe, still go back and watch them. 
a lot of them were I just felt like they were too short I didn't get enough of a feel for the presenter in a lot of the in a lot of the cases but there were some really really good talks that I enjoyed I believe you can if you can still go access the content I think it's definitely worth it just go to Llewellyn.com uh, and look for their online conference see if the video content is still available I would assume that it is a lot of the authors that were there were also talking about either um, books that they already have out or that are coming out uh, one of the talks was Melissa Sonova she was talking about kitchen table magic which is coming out which I think is kind of exciting um, and I that was one of my favorite talks Ethany talked about I think Ethany was on there and talking I did not just make that up in my head Oh, she was talking about your tarot court. Yeah, okay. Phew. Okay, I feel better now. Um, but her talks are always really enjoyable. And there was a couple of others that I also enjoyed. But to be honest, a lot of them, I just, again, I didn't feel like I had enough time with the with the speakers to really get a feel for them. So there's ones that I might still go back and watch, but that was still pretty cool. There's been a ton of online conferences lately, and there's just no way to make them all. But I have really enjoyed the stuff that I have seen. So that was a fun one. And I think that might be book trailer. Da, 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 da. Oh, let's talk about magic and then we'll talk about books and decks because I have a fair amount to talk about on those topics. So magic, there's only one real big thing and I'm going to kind of roll in together magic, herbs, crystals and all of that because they're kind of all in the same thing. I did one primary working in June and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to show you. I smell so good. Okay. So I made myself a... Sh oh no! This is what happens when you tip something towards the camera. I literally just spilled. It's okay. It's okay. It'll just add extra oomph to my carpet. It's fine. Anyway, without spilling it, I made myself a uh, shadow work magical herbal blend. Um, so what I did was I went through my apothecary. I consciously selected herbs with properties that would support a specific segment of shadow work that I am currently doing. Um, for me in my practice, just to quickly define, shadow work is working on that stuff, those like deeply ingrained patterns of thinking or of behavior that in my experience don't serve. Now there's also positive things that can lurk in shadow work that you may want to bring forward, but in this case I am actually working on sort of transmuting and transforming um, something that doesn't serve into something that does. So this herbal blend contains a combination of herbs and oils that help to dispel the thing I'm trying to dispel and also help to attract the thing I am replacing the thing I want to dispel with. So without sharing my personal shadow work, um, let's just say if you were trying to um, quit being self-critical, right, then this kind of herbal blend would be an herbal blend where you have herbs in here that are to help you stop focusing on negativity and then also herbs in here that would help you focus on positivity. So I'm not only trying to banish, I'm trying to both banish and attract. So it's this kind of like beautiful yin yang of like push pull in this herbal blend. Um, I'm really excited. There are about 10 different herbs in here and some of the things you might be able to notice in here are marigold, lavender, um, there's burdock and black pepper and there's just a bunch of other great stuff in here and I've also mixed into this blend um, three different of my witch's moon magical oils I used the serpent oil which I think is wonderful for any kind of cyclical type behavior or habit or things that you want to transmute I think the energy of the serpent and the Ouroboros and shedding your skin is all really great stuff so that's in here an expansion oil is in here again more of that drawing in and the other oil that I used in here is the lotus oil because the lotus is such a beautiful symbol for working your way through muck to blossom. So all three of those are in here as well. I actually made two packed full jars of this herbal blend. And from this, I have also made a um, bath salt that is got all of those herbs in there as well as a bunch more of all three of those oils so this this blend does have the oils mixed in um, but this has a lot more of the oils so this is a bath salt specifically with again just piggybacking off of the same thing and I also made a roll-on oil for myself with all of those same herbs and the oil that is in here is a mix of those three oils with a bunch of the herbs from the herbal blend together. So it's like supercharged. And this actually also has a small rose quartz in here as well as a small Lemurian crystal point just to help boost it. And the rollerball itself is, oh, come on. 
The roller ball itself, it's very pale, but it is made of rose quartz. So this is the magical oil that I can use to apply throughout the day or as I want to focus on this working. What I like about this from a magical perspective is I feel like doing this lets me work with this energy in a bunch of different ways. So I can use the herbal blend as an incense. I can put it in sachets. I can use it and mix it with salt and use it in my rituals. I feel like I've got a lot of ways I can use this. I can make more oil. Also by making the salt, I can incorporate it into my ritual baths and this just lets me carry it with me on the go and continue to hold this focus and this intention. So it's a really kind of all purpose working. It's kind of like making a sourdough starter and then making sourdough pancakes and then making sourdough bread and sourdough muffins and so forth and so on. And then you just, I just keep using this sort of parent blend and I was actually a smart little witch and remembered to write down what I put in it and why. So when I went through my apothecary and I chose the herbs that I chose and the crystals and things like that and the oils, I made a note in this um, journal of which things I picked and what properties specifically I was picking them for because a lot of times herbs have multiple properties. Um, but I picked them for specific qualities. And then what I did is as I was adding them to my mortar and pestle and grinding them, I, I was working clockwise for any of the attracting herbs, counterclockwise for any of the sort of dispelling herbs. And as I was doing that, I was like chanting over and over again the purpose for each of those herbs. So like if I add the pepper, I was chanting about that purpose, right? So really, really proud of this working. And it's one that I think I'm going to be working with for a while. And I used, of course, my Mama Rose Quartz here, my vibrated rose quartz, which is one of my favorite crystals of all time, to just sort of sit with these herbal blends and help to charge and support them. So that is sort of my favorite herbs of the month, crystal working all wrapped in together. Okay, books and then decks. So I managed to actually not that long ago, finish um, my book four, Queen of Shadows in the Throne of Glass series. It was really good. I did start to drag a little bit towards the end and I think it's because as I mentioned before, I feel like I was experiencing just a little bit of series fatigue, but this was such a good book and I feel like I got to a very solid stopping point and it made it easier to move on to reading other things while I wait to jump into the fifth, sixth, and seventh books. So I'm giving myself a bit of a breather, but it was pretty good. Yeah, because I'm on Queen of Shadows. There's only, yeah, I think there are three more books left. So that one is on my Kindle. I finally finished that while I was reading that, because do you ever do the thing where you've got like, like a book you read when you're over here and you got a book you read when you're over there? And <laughs> anyway, I actually read Witchy by Ariel Slamet Rise. This is a graphic novel. Um, this came in my Owl Crate book for May, uh, which if I remember, I will put up in the eye my Owl Crate unboxing. Um, I've never read a graphic novel before besides my uh, Last Unicorn Collector's Edition graphic novel, which you can see back there. I found it really enjoyable to read a graphic novel. I was surprised how quick and easy the read was and also how engaging some of the illustrated like sound effects and things like that were. Maybe that's a very common thing, but I was kind of surprised how how visual, how kind of wrapped up in the story and the characters that I got. That being said, and oh, and there's some really cool inclusiveness concepts in here that I don't want to get into because I don't want to spoil anything, but just this was really kind of a book where I think a lot of people would feel very seen um, and could relate to. That being said, I was so mad at this book. So mad. Keep in mind, oh, there's a bird. Keep in mind, I, I, I haven't really read graphic novels. I didn't know, oh, it's my Robin. He's been hanging out outside my window all day when I've been filming today. Okay, I, anyway, reeling it in, reeling it in. Um, I didn't know that graphic novels are usually part of a series. And I also didn't know that, and maybe this isn't common, somebody who reads graphic novels, please tell me down below. But I also didn't know that they were the kind of series where you really have to read the series. I really have to read the series. So I didn't know that going in. I didn't see any indication on the book that it was part of a series. Mind you, I handed this to my eldest man child and he's like, but, but mom, there's like a one. There's a one on the book right here. Well, I didn't notice the one. Um, and there was nothing else anywhere about like, oh, book one in the blah, blah, blah series or look for book two. You know how in the beginning of a book, there'll sometimes be like some kind of indication that there's another book, there's nothing, there's nothing. And what's worse is that there was no big story arc 
You know when you read a book and it's part of a series, such as with my Throne of Glass series, there's like a whole big storyline. And so when you get to the end of the book, you feel like you've read a book. And then, yes, you're curious about what's going to happen next, so you read book two. And maybe there's like a mild little cliffhanger. But no, 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 this book just like, this story just stops. It just hard stops at like a certain point. And I'm like, w uh, was this a sample? Is this the whole thing? W what's going on? I was really angry, guys. I was mad at this book because I felt like I was trapped. Like now, I feel like I need to read book two. And now because I feel like I need to read book two, I don't want to read book two because I'm stubborn like that. And if you make me feel like I have to do something, I suddenly don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> kind of what this is like. Um, if you are cool with jumping into a series, this could be pretty darn fun. Um, the characters are really engaging and I think you can get really attached to them pretty quickly. The story is really, really interesting. It's essentially about a world where uh, magic is determined by the length of your hair, which seems like kind of a weird concept, but it is, there is intrigue in that concept and that intrigue is slowly building throughout the story. Um, but I felt like this was like a big lead up and then just it stopped. So I won't be reading any more of this series. And this one kind of made me mad. But it's not because it was bad, necessarily. I just, I want to read a series because I want to, not because I have to. Like, I could have stopped with Throne of Glass book one and I would have been fine. I would have been fine. I wanted to read book two because I got attached to the characters. But they didn't leave me hanging before there was like a major conflict or like a major thing that resolved like this one did. This one did that. It's not nice. Not nice, Ariel. Not nice. <laughs> but again, please keep in mind, I'm a complete noob when it comes to reading graphic novels, and I suppose if I, if this is how they all are, maybe it's just expected that this is the experience. I did not expect it, and when I went to Goodreads and read some other reviews, it seemed like other people maybe didn't always expect it either, so maybe you should make it more obvious that it's part of a series. That's my feedback on that. <laughs> that said, Oh my gosh, I read Bone Crier's Moon, which was my April Owl Crate book. I read this book in like four days. It's like, how many pages is this? Five, like 500 pages. This book, I cannot say enough positive things about. This is by Catherine Purdy. Sorry, I know the cover's reflective because it's one of those Owl Crate exclusive covers. Catherine Purdy, um, this, and it had gilded pages. Um, this book was so 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 good i i don't know how i always feel about multiple point of view in books also my dog is being so cute behind me um but this book it rapidly changes every single chapter it rotates between three different point of view um three different points of view i guess is how you would say that um it's fast paced it's engaging i did not want to put it down I did not want to put it down. And clearly I didn't because I read it in like four days. Um, it was really, really, really good. I will read this again. And there is a, um, a very clear hint that there is a sequel because it says, don't miss the entrancing sequel to Bone Crier's Moon. See how nice that is? Because I know there's gonna be a sequel. <laughs> I'm bitter about the witchy book. I really am. Um, I have to check and see if the sequel is out, although I sincerely doubt it because I think this book actually just released in March or April of this year. So I'd probably be waiting for a bit. It just says copyright 2020 first edition, so I don't know. It, it did come out this year. Um, this was really, 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 really good. If you like YA fantasy, and you enjoy multiple points of view, I think you would really enjoy this. Again, I just feel like the, the story moved very quickly. I was really attached to the characters from the beginning. Um, and I don't know what makes a good book when it comes to fiction. I have no idea. But this one caught my attention. And I would say of all the fiction books I've read in recent months, this was the one that I read the fastest that I could not have enough, get enough of. And at no point did it feel like it was dragging. At no point did it feel slow. I wanted to bring this book with me everywhere because I didn't want to miss an opportunity to see what would happen next. It's really, really, really good. Um, so highly, highly recommend. And I'm currently reading, um, which I didn't bring the dust jacket because it's currently kicking around with me right now. So I didn't, I, whenever I'm currently reading a hardbound book like this, um, I don't bring the dust jacket, but this is in, is that upside down? There we go. <laughs> Incendiary. Um, this is by, oh, what's the full author's name? I've just started it. Um, Cordova, Cordova. Uh, Zareda Cordova. So that is the opening title page. 
Um, all the Alcrate books come signed and so far I'm enjoying this but I'm only into like the first chapter so like grain of salt but this was my June no May. <laughs> this was my May Owl Crate book. Um, so I'm really excited to be reading this now. I will let you guys know how it is. I will surely finish it by next month's show and tell. So I'll keep you posted. Let's talk about decks because there were so many good things this month. So for starters, I think near the beginning of the month, um, one of my favorite decks that I worked with was the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. And I love this deck. I love the feel of this cardstock. It is everything. I really enjoy this world. I really enjoyed the personality in these cards, the quirkiness to the fonts and the artwork. This one was just a lot of fun to work with to the point where I was like, do I need Queen Alice? I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Do I need Queen Alice? Maybe I need Queen Alice, but I have the Alice Tarot by Baba Studios and I'm worried that they would compete. So probably I'm gonna try to hold off, but I really, really, really enjoyed working with this deck and it is currently hanging on my favorites rack. I know I asked you guys possibly even last month if I should film a video about what's currently on my favorites rack. Um, I will do that soon, <laughs> probably, but I feel like I've had just a lot going on and also the list of videos I wanna make is longer than I have time, probably forever. So I will always feel behind <laughs> in creating content and as it is, I feel like I, I put a lot, <laughs> put a lot out there um, and I don't want you guys to get like tired of my face, and my voice. So I'm trying to rein it in a little bit, a little bit, but eventually I will do that. In any case, it's currently living in this water seashell bag, which I love. It's not in its box and that's okay. I should have had Peggy make me a larger one of these bags, but I did not. So this is the bag it's in. Fits it perfectly without the box. Um, this is her small, her small size bag. In case you're curious, because I'm constantly showing my wife because it's my channel and my sandbox. And I want to show her because I love her and I love the stuff she makes. Okay, enough. Anyways, other decks I really enjoyed playing with. This one, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show it just briefly because I know it's super sad for some of you, but I really enjoyed working with the Majestic Earth Tarot. I got this win at, one in after purchasing it shortly after the Kickstarter decks shipped. It is now out of print and out of, out of stock as far as I can tell, and nobody seems to be able to find out if this is something you'll be able to still get or get again or whatever. Um, it's breathtaking. The cards are absolutely stunning. Those are these are just like extra bonus element cards which I keep in the deck. The the landscape thing bothers me, but these are such beautiful images that I still want them in the deck. Um hopefully it's still focusing. These cards are beautiful. I do have a full walkthrough of this deck, so check it out. I'll try to have it up in the eye if I didn't run out of spots. Um check it out because it's a really really beautiful deck. Unfortunately, it is again out of print. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to rub it in anybody's face but I really enjoyed it and it's show and tell, so I'm showing, telling. Anyway, other things I really, really enjoyed playing with this month include the beautiful Star Seeker Tarot. I'm so glad I backed this on Kickstarter. It is gorgeous. Um, the box is great, it's a clamshell style and the book is fantastic. The little messages and meanings and descriptions of the cards you get in here I think are spot on and there is a fresh take to the cards. I don't think I've done a tarot, no, I just got this deck, so I haven't done a tarot by the book with it yet, but hopefully it'll come up soon. I always do those by random draw, but this book, or this deck, beautiful, beautiful backings, gorgeous sides, stunning artwork, really pretty colors, lots of depth and darkness in some of the cards, as you can see, but also lots of light colors as well, and brightness. It's really beautiful. I definitely enjoy working with this. I also have a full walkthrough of this deck, which I'll have somewhere, or just search it on my channel. Um, but I really enjoyed working with this this month. And I will, I'm sure, be reaching for it again soon. I think I may have hung this on my favorites rack. I'll see when I go to put them away and see where my empty hooks are, but I'm pretty sure. And lastly, for decks that I want to talk to as far as favorites goes, let's say, oh no, there's two more things. Uh, Oracle, this one's in, look at the pretty herbal unicorn bag. Okay, anyway, this is the Oracle of Essences. This is by, oh, what's her name? Monica, the Enchantress, and she's at theenchantress.com. I will try to remember, remember to have links to all the decks in the description box down below, but this is just, it's a really gorgeous deck. I love the backs. 
To me, this feels like working with herbs, and somebody recently said, so this actually came up a bit in the comments of my video talking about this deck during my weekly deck reviews. Um, I mentioned that there was no tea, this is, let me back up. This is a deck based on essential oils. That's why it's called the Oracle of Essences. Um, however, I don't have a huge library of essential oils, so I was using it almost like an herbal type deck. Um, but I mentioned that I was surprised that there was no tea tree oil in the deck. As it turns out though, one of the oils in here is called Manuka? No, 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 Maluka. And I was educated in the comments last week, I'm just gonna see if I can find it, that Maluka is tea tree oil. Um, which was kind of cool. So, oh, there it is. Melaleuca. Melaleuca. There it is. Um, so that one is apparently tea tree oil, so it's not missing. I just remembered feeling kind of like surprised that it wasn't in there because tea tree is such a common oil. Um, but it's really nice. There's how many cards in here? 62 full color cards. And they've got not only the name of the oil, but two keywords for every single card. This is what I like. It's a good thing. Um, and I really enjoyed working with it. I think it's beautiful. It is matte gold gilded really nice cardstock very similar cardstock to that dame darcy mermaid i would say it feels very similar possibly a little slipperier but not by much um and if i were to venture guess i'd say it was pretty much the same kind of cardstock really nice love it enjoy it it was fun and i will continue to play with it and last but not least, this was probably the newest deck to my collection in June, is Messages from the Mermaids. This is by Karen Kay and the artwork is by Linda Olson. It is a, it's just a beautiful, beautiful Oracle deck. Um, it's aesthetically beautiful. It's diverse. I have a full walkthrough of this. Somebody asked if there was any age diversity in this deck, and I really don't think that there is. I noticed that there was sort of, I mean, there are some characters here who, no, they pretty much all look kind of young, to be honest. Some look like more mature than others, like, but I would say the range is like 20 to 45 or something like that. Like it's not like there's, you know, yeah, I don't think there's any real noticeable age diversity. It definitely leans young. Yeah. I just wanted to look. This is probably the closest. We've got a, like a white haired kind of like Ariel's dad kind of, kind of card here. Um, anyways, that was a lot of looking through cards. Backings, gorgeous. Um, I just really enjoyed the general, like, sort of racial diversity and body diversity in these cards. I know I'm going kind of fast, so feel free to check out my full walkthrough. Um, the gloss does, yeah, see, I love this card. But I really enjoyed working with it. I felt like I got great messages. It felt very gentle and it felt very magical. It definitely felt like it pulled me into a mermaid world. I really, I really enjoyed it. So that is Messages from the Mermaids. The guidebook is also really good. Um, this one is probably going to live up on my oceany altar up there, so I'm going to set that aside. And that, my friends, is my June show and tell. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me. This was a lot of fun. Take, I'm sure there'll be lots to talk about in July because July is my birthday month. And also, if everything goes according to plan, my book will release in July and that will be a thing. But in any case, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for hanging out. I would love to hear your feedback down below on anything I talked about, showed, or shared, because that is part of the fun. And that way you can also share with each other. So thank you so, so much. Remember to like this video and hit that little thumbs up if, you know what I mean, like it, hit the like button, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this month's show and tell. And be sure and comment down below if you have any feedback. Share this if you know anybody who wants to see it. And subscribe if you're new here. If you want to book a personal tarot reading, with me, you can do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thanks guys. Bye.